Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Now it's been no secret that I've been looking to replace the Corsa for a little while now. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love that car. I still love it so much. It is definitely the best possible first car I could ever have got. And that's why I've kept it for three and a half years. But seeing as I have owned it for quite a while, it is time to unfortunately replace it. However, I was looking for a new car for the past six to eight months. Because the Corsa was so good, it's taken me ages to find a car that is good enough to match it, if not beat it. So, welcome to my 2016 Abarth 595. So here it is then, the replacement to the Corsa. I still cannot get my head around the fact that this is mine. I think the thing is I've been looking for this car for months and I actually test drove about four but they just weren't suitable. So to actually have one now, it is a little bit surreal. I'm definitely not used to it. But what do you think of this? Absolute beast, proper little hot hatch. This thing is amazing. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Of course, as you can see there, 2016 registered car and this has got to be one of the first facelift Abarths in the country. They actually came out mid 2016 so the first 16 plates have the old Abarth styling, the sort of more Fiat 500-esque look whereas this I really do like the facelift coming with the crazy new bumper. This really differentiates the car from the Fiat 500 which of course this car is based off of Bath being a subsidiary of Fiat so taking the original 500 and going absolutely ham with the style and as you can see this has the resemblance of the 500 but is so much more aggressive with additional things such as the rear wing and this massive rear bumper with a crazy diffuser and then the dual exhaust. So I'll have to turn it on in a minute and show you guys how this sounds because it sounds absolutely awesome. Proper mean sounding car. You would not expect that sort of noise to come out of this. So in a minute, I'll turn that on, but I'm obsessed with the look of this car. As I mentioned before, the facelift really, I think, brings out the aggression in this car. I really do as well like the tail lights. This actually saves me a job. I didn't expect to get a facelifted version. So I was actually gonna put those tail lights on and a bath if I got the generation before this one. So I am very, very happy with the styling. This is one beautiful car. 17 inch alloys with a Scorpion in the middle, the Scorpion being, the centerpiece of the Abarth badge there, as you can see, 595. So this car, as we walk around to the front, which is, of course, my favorite angle, I do really like the aggressive front bumper on this with the two little fog lights flanking down the bottom. I think this looks absolutely great, but a little bit of information about it. This car has a 1.4 litre turbocharged engine. Despite there being very minimal space, it does pack a lot of punch, 143 brake horsepower going 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds. So this thing is certainly quick despite its very small presence. So comparing this to the Corsa, it is a very, very different car. This thing a lot smaller, a lot quicker, so it's something that I really do need to get used to. I haven't yet parallel parked this car at the time of making this video, so I think that's one challenge that I'm gonna to have to uh, conquer. And also, I'm pretty sure that I put this on full lock. So as you can see there, there is not much steering angle in this thing. Of course, a very small car, so with these massive 17 inch alloys, there really isn't much space to put any sort of angle on the turning circle. But let's just show you the inside and then we'll start up this beast. So just taking a little look inside here, everything very centralized towards the driver. Of course, there's not really much space inside the car. So they really have made the most of the space, but it does look a little bit cramped inside here until you really get inside the car and then it seems a bit more spacious. But from this angle, it certainly looks a little bit cramped. But if we just swing inside with my uh, muddy shoes on today, unfortunately, the weather is not very good. I've been meaning to film this reveal for a couple of days now, but the weather has been absolutely dreadful but just having a little look inside the car this being the face lifted version taking inspiration from the new 500 this badge here and this badge here are the only reminiscence of the fiat 500 in this car everything else has a bath logos on as you can see just there which i think is a very nice touch kind of taking it away from the basic 500 and showing you that you have got the upgraded car so we'll just close the door and fully immerse ourselves inside the cabin as you can see that little bath logo coming up 
on the inside, 25,000 miles on this car, one owner. I'm very, very fortunate and lucky to have a car like this. I do feel very privileged. So I really do like the new infotainment. It's got a full touch screen. And then we've also rocking the aircon. This is an additional extra on this car. I think it's a bit of a weight saving thing, but I'm glad it includes it because definitely gonna need that. So the car doesn't have that many controls, but as you can see up here, little boost gauge, which is activated by the sport button. You can see just in the center there, if it makes it out, this becomes illuminated, say in sport. This does run the whole time, but in sport mode. From what I can tell, I'm not used to it yet. I'm really not personally a massive fan of the sport mode, but what it does is it tightens up the throttle a little bit and makes the steering heavy. I'm not used to the steering being heavy, so I think that's one thing I have to get used to. But despite that, it is a very nice thing to be inside the interior of this car and definitely a big step up from the quarter in terms of technology. So if we turn this on, I'll show you some of the infotainment that it's got. So foot on the clutch and into neutral as we turn this very small car on. And you sort of get a little bit of an idea of the growl of the car from there. As you can see, this dial, I absolutely love it. The new sort of a bass, I think from 2015 onwards, had this new digital display. So it shows the mileage, the revs, the temperature of the engine, the fuel, which I don't expect to be very good, but as you can see there, full tank, 313 miles of range. This has been going up since my journey, so I suspect on a full tank, it'll probably get about 350, 370 mile of range, but I'm not too sure. And then it's got active mile per gallon just there. Really nice car with the active mile per hour digital display in the middle. I am such a big fan. This is genuinely such a step up in terms of technology and power and everything from the Corsa that I really hope that you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I'm very, like still in shock to own a car of this caliber, of this standard. But then if we come over to the digital display in the middle and just turn this thing on, as you can see there, nice Bath logo lighting up in the middle. Now this, I'm a massive fan of it, does tell you to accept that before you start using it. So you've got the radio, the media, trip, phone, apps. Apparently, I'm not yet to use it, but apparently on the apps thing, you can link up some Bluetooth to your phone and it will allow you to control things like the sat nav and stuff like that off this little display, which I think will be a really nice touch as this car doesn't come built in with the sat nav. But of course, linking up to my phone right now, let's stop that. I can of course run the sat nav through my phone and it will come through the speakers anyway, but I think I need a little mount. I'm not sure where to put it because there isn't that much space. In the course where I had a mount just on the, um, on the vent, which allowed me to put my phone on, but I don't think my phone will actually fit there. It'll probably cover up the gauge. So probably stick some in just on the window up here, but I'll get around to that eventually. But seeing as the car is turned on, I think we should come around to the back because this is the Abbas sort of party piece coming past all the little 595 badges down the side, which I absolutely love. And considering this is idling, the engine is warm, it still sounds good, but I'll put you on the floor. We'll give it a few little revs. <laughs> So not bad at all for a car that's warm as well. Something like this does not seem like it should have that sort of noise coming out the back of it. But I've got the Abarth key here right now. Absolutely loving this little thing. If it decides to ever focus on it, there we go. So you've just got the simple lock, unlock and the boot. Simple design, but yeah, I really do like how a bath have taken this car and really brought all the styling into their own hands, changing every single logo for the Abarth logo and really showing that you own something a little bit special, a little Italian hot hatch, arguably, probably a very stupid decision <laughs> to buy this car in terms of things like fuel economy, depreciation, things like that, but it's something fun, something that I'm going to really enjoy driving and something that hopefully I'll own for the foreseeable future. So just like the Corsa, of course, this car will be going to loads of events. This weekend, we're actually headed to Cars and Coffee London. So the first proper outing of this car and the first trip to London in it. I actually picked this car up from Somerset. So on that drive, I got a little bit of an idea bringing it back up to Warwickshire of how this car performs. But I think driving it into London for Cars and Coffee will be a great time to really experience how the car drives for long distances when it's not pitch black and absolutely pissing it down so hopefully the weather will be a lot better for cars and coffee but that is of course at topaz detailing and then this car will be headed to the mclaren technology center after that so what a first proper outing proper drive in the car and i'll of course be filming that this weekend so make sure that you do look out on the channel for that because it's going to be a great video and a great way to break in the abarth 
So I really hope that you guys are as excited as I am for this car. We will of course be filming loads more videos with this car. We've still got loads of stuff planned and wow, what a little beast this thing is. I really hope you guys have gone on to enjoy today's video. If you have, please make sure that you do of course smash it a like, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.